As is the case with a surprising amount of cards in my favourites list actually, this was one of those occasions where I kind of went through different periods of liking and disliking the vehicle in question. And the car is of course a Spiker. Now we don't talk about Spiker directly a huge amount on the channel. I do reference them quite a lot because to me Spiker is one of those brands and I often put them in this same group with companies like Pagani, Koenigsegg, Zenvo, Gumpert even, Ascari for sure, where it's a manufacturer which is truly boutique, they know their audience, they play to their fans, and they create these exquisite works of art within the exotic car world. And although they do sometimes go racing, or set certain records, possibly in some cases, that's not really what they're about. All of those things are almost incidental. They don't really do marketing, they don't do advertising, they don't pay other companies to say advertise their car for them or stuff like that. They just have a fan base and they play to that fan base. They are a maker of art, really. The Zonda, the Maserati MC12, and this car I would definitely put in that category, the Spyker C8 La Violette, and in particular, the Spider because with a lot of my favourite supercars, I actually prefer the open-top version. And that's usually for a twofold reason. One is that, to me, and I mentioned this in one of the past episodes, I can't recall what car it was, it was something that was a target top. The Callaway, in fact, that's what it was, the Callaway C12. A car, to me, that has a convertible option is almost like a multi-purpose vehicle to me. And I'm sure that sounds weird to some people, but for others, I think you know what I mean. It's almost like instead of having one car, you've got the option of it being two cars, because you have this hard top, but you could take it off if you want to. And two perfect examples of that are a Koenigsegg, which is a legitimate coupe, but you can also take the roof off, and a Maserati MC12, which again, is a full-on, legitimate looking coupe, which you can also remove the target top from, and it looks fantastic. And even in the concept car world, there's a car which a lot of people don't realise is a target top, and that's the Cadillac Sian concept. You can take the roof off of that car, looks fantastic, and it allows you to almost have like two cars in one. The second reason is space. I'm not a small person, so I like cars that have an open top because I have more headroom, so that's always an advantage for me. The Spyker is one such vehicle. Now, the car itself isn't overly big. In fact, the Laviolette is one of the smaller cars that they've made. They've made stuff like the Aleron, a car which is perfectly suited to me, the D8 or the D12 Peking to Paris, the big SUV concept that they did. But even then, this one takes the cake for me. And the funny thing is, this car not necessarily in open top form, but as a model range, the C8 in particular, almost single-handedly introduced me to the brand, made me dislike the brand, and then made me love the brand. Because I was first introduced to Spyker as a brand in around 2005 on Gran Turismo 4. I'd never heard of them before. I had no idea that they used to make aeroplanes and that they were a vintage manufacturer from way back in the day, that they liquidated as so many did and then been resurrected again, like Marcos and TVR and various others. But it made a quick impression. The C8 La Violette on Gran Turismo 4 is a striking looking car. It doesn't have the most power in the world, but it immediately caught my attention. I love the two-tone. The use of black and chrome looks fantastic. And it's a difficult style to pull off, because if you think about it, there aren't many cars which can have chrome and look good, because usually it looks cheesy. And I'm talking about modern cars. A classic car, of course, can pull it off, but these days, chrome, it just looks too pimped out. It has to be done to the right vehicle. Whereas with this one, it suits it so well. And again, it's because of that aviation tie-in. Now, speaking of that aviation tie-in, this is going to sound so petty, and I know it's petty, and my friends at the time thought that this was the most hilarious thing ever. But back when I was about, say, 14 or 15, I started playing a little game known as Test Drive Unlimited. And on Test Drive Unlimited, there are spikers. And in particular, one of them was the La Violette. I'd never seen the inside of one before. And when I looked at the interior, I loved everything. Except for one thing. And I know this sounds trivial, and it probably sounds ridiculous to some people. But I cannot stand the steering wheel in a spiker. 
It's the dumbest looking steering wheel I have ever seen. Who puts four spokes on anything? Cars that have wheels with four spokes look dumb. Steering wheels with four spokes look dumb. It turns it from a piece of art to something which looks like it was made for a child, like a Lego brick. Why did they do that? Well, the reason was simple. And at the time, I wasn't familiar with it, but it's the whole aviation theme, having the look of propellers and that kind of stuff. Now, looking back at it now, I actually don't mind that. But at the time, it completely put me off the brand. And then, once I'd seen that, I just started developing a negative image of them. Now, I know that sounds so petty, but as I've said before, a huge thing for me about why I love a car has to do with the interior. Because at the end of the day, it doesn't matter how good it looks from the outside, you spend more time inside the car than outside. So it needs to be a place that you want to be. And for me, that means a place that looks like artwork, which is why some of my favourite cars include Paganis, Astons, Teslas, cars that have gorgeous interior design, as far as I'm concerned, of course, and a Spyker does. Now, once I got over my issue with the steering wheel, and I'm still not a fan of it, really, but there you go, I did love the rest of the car, and when I saw that there was an open-top version of it, I just loved it even more. Now, my dream spec, and I'll probably include some pictures of this in the video if I can find them, are if I could have this car in purple. Purple isn't an obvious choice for many cars, but I think that spikers suit that colour. It's weird, it's not an obvious choice, it's oddball, and I think it looks incredible on the car, especially once again with the chrome. Plus, I love the fact that Spyker, in its roadster form, this one at least, has a very speedster-style appearance. Technically, it's a roadster or a spider, but it looks like a speedster, that kind of invisible window line, which it has, which looks fantastic. And I also love the fact that this one doesn't need to be overly fast. It is a fast car, about 185, 187 miles per hour, or thereabouts, 0 to 60, about 4.2, 4.3, that kind of thing, around 400 horsepower from an Audi engine. But it's not the fastest thing in the world, it's not going to beat everything around a track, of course not. Plus it's very expensive for what it is, it's like a Scari KZ1 money. But I just love it. I love the look of the car, I love the interior, I love the sound that it makes, I love how it almost feels like, in a similar way again to the Zondo or the MC12, a rolling piece of art. I love Spikers overall because of that. I love pretty much every Spiker that I've seen, with very few exceptions. And to me, this one, it has a special place almost because of the journey that it brought me on, of loving it, disliking it, and loving it again. And for me, this is my favourite Spiker, and it definitely deserves a place in 19th. But that's it overall for this pick. Of course, I'll see you guys next time, and if you want to check out all the other episodes in this series, you can click through and do so at the end. But for now, as always, thanks for watching. <laughs>